it's a book which deals with technology and ethics and sexuality. So I'm going to read from the beginning. Um, and basically, um, the first section of the book deals with um, virtual reality. Has anyone ever tried on virtual reality glasses and had a look? Yeah, well, I think the future is going to get much more interesting in terms of that kind of technology. I have too, and it's quite amazing, but um, I think it's going to get more amazing. Uh, we're in the voice of Caspar, um, who is a university lecturer, so it's kind of appropriate to be reading this at QUT. He is um, a university lecturer who um, seems to have a habit of sleeping with his students. And um, he has been given um, a memory stick and a suit by one of his ex-students, um, which is a virtual reality experience, and it's the future of memoir. I hold the memory stick up to my nose as if I might smell her fingers on it. Nothing. Plastic. A petrochemical base note. There is a piece of characteristically heavy paper in the envelope. Thanks for this. And on the flip side, I value your feedback. There is a suit to go with it. A skin, that's what they call them. I hold the thing up, weighing it, turning it. It is just like a skin that someone might have shed. A whole person, degloved, Rubbery, flesh-coloured, damply cold. I pour a glass of wine and sit by the laptop. Liv's email has instructions. This is a memoir. Ten years in the making. First person, present tense. I'd like to thank you for the lessons you taught me. Voice is everything. You were right. I sip and tap the memory stick on the kitchen counter. Bark, I say, and the computer anticipates my track choice. Cello suites. I tap my finger on the side of the glass. Even with bark to calm me, I can't settle. How could this be the future of memoir? How could a memory stick and a synthetic suit replace Nin and Levi and Thoreau? I push the glass aside, barely touched. Suiting up is quite a process. At this time in the evening, I'd rather be putting on my tracksuit pants. It feels too intimate, the fabric. A little like neoprene, but sheerer, softer against naked skin. The little tube-shaped pouch for the penis. It feels almost pornographic to slip myself inside it. I suppose there's a different model for the ladies, but I can't imagine how the crotch would be configured. They use these suits for porn, of course. Pornography is the driver for most innovation. If it weren't for the needs of men, we would never have shot off into space. I press the sliver of plastic into the slot in the machine. I slip the headpiece into place, and my eyes adjust to the opti optical limits. A grey line begins to turn blue, the words pairing suit above it. First person, present tense, prologue. Perhaps the title's a little obvious. I'll tell her this. Why is it impossible to make notes when you're in the skin? Title. I squeeze my eyes shut to commit the note to memory. Tell her to change the title. Then it begins. I am momentarily confused. I'm watching myself. I recognize the university, a lecture theater, probably L block, although I've never seen it from this angle. I'm sitting in an audience of students. I can feel the press of the seat back, the shift of the swiveling lap table across my knees. I never realised how hard these seats are. I never knew how constricted you can feel when the laptop is swung into place. I look down at the table and there is my laptop. No, not my laptop. This is more a modern laptop. Mine has travelled with me for 10 years. Upgrades, add-ons, heavy and silver and uncomfortable. This one is lighter and sleeker. I remember it. This is Liv's laptop that she replaced with a more powerful model when she graduated. These are Liv's tight black jeans constricting my hips. Liv's high heels slipped onto my feet. The left one tapping against the seat in front of me, her. On Liv's laptop screen, there is a flashing red word, remembering, remembering. I am pacing back and forth in front of myself. No, in front of Liv. Voice, I say. Oh God, that shirt. Do I really look that chubby in it? Do I even own that shirt anymore? Purple check. 
the warping across the protrusion of my stomach. I try to suck my gut in, but I can't, and I needn't. I am slim as a girl. I am a girl. I am live. I can't breathe. I fumble for the headpiece, the mask, whatever it's called in this mess of silicon and circuitry. I snap it off and take deep breaths. Parallel lines sit in the middle of the laptop screen, my heavy old silver laptop, the universal symbol for paused feed. It is strange to be back here in my own body. I catch a glimpse of my face reflected in the dull blue of the screen. I am six years older now. That plump version of myself must have been one of the first times we met. I didn't even remember her name back then. She was one of the many faceless students. I have a whole new batch of them now and each new crop is exactly the same as the last. I take a big swallow of wine. I feel myself returning, occupying my body once more. A draft licks at my cheek. I have left a window open somewhere. Was I really that old, even then? I'm tempted to get up, go to a mirror, find myself again. Of course, it's just a trick of perspective or technology, a bad lens, a dodgy angle. I know what I look like. Below the pause symbol, there is a line and the word contents. I click on the word and there are chapter numbers, prologue, chapter one, chapter two, all the way to chapter 34, and then an epilogue. I hover the arrow over the first chapter and click. The cursor flashes, waiting for me to put the headpiece back on. I take deep breaths as if I were about to plunge into the icy water. Then, when my head is spinning from hyperventilation, I slip the mask back onto my head. Again, a moment of disorientation. It is as if I have been swallowed whole by a creature barely larger than myself, a croc or a shark. My muscles tense to cut my way out, emerge like Jonah, triumphant and covered in ambergris. But the panic settles, the new skin eases snug against my own, becomes my own, its eyes, my eyes, the mechanical iris making its adjustments, pairing suit. The new world becomes clear, clearer than the old real world. Everything leaps crisply into focus. A room, the smell of it, at once familiar and yet unfamiliar. I sniff. That scent, cloves, cut grass and dust, an old book scent and the reek of unwashed sheets. It smells like my own bedroom and yet different, heightened. I blink and take an unbalanced step into the room. A moment of dizziness and then I reach out and touch the wall, my own bedroom wall. It is solid. I am home. But I'm not. I'm not in my bedroom. I struggle against this new overlap of reality. I know I'm sitting in the kitchen, plugged into Liv's program, clad in a suit, a second skin. I try to turn, to walk back to where I know I'm sitting, but nothing happens. I have no agency in this story. I run my fingers without volition. My fingers are run over the flock wallpaper. I look down as the piles of, at the piles of books lining the wall. The titles leap into focus as I stare. Nausgaard, Atwood, Orwell, Yuknovich, Nin. Although I know the Nin is no longer there, I lent that book to a student, the one who superseded Liv. Slimmer waist, longer hair, bigger tits. But here is the book, returned to its rightful place in the pile at my feet. I pick up the Yuknovich, the chronology of water, and turn it in my hands. I am wearing nail polish green on the right hand, and on the left a darker green, almost brown, a shimmering like the carapace of a beetle. I vaguely remember knowing a girl who did this, two different colours at once. Who was it? Who am I? Thank you.